Can you guys hear me? Thank you. Hi. Wouldn't it be funny if we didn't talk about Google's $23 billion oh. dollar acquisition now that it's been mentioned twice? <laughs> the 23-ton <laughs> elephant in the yes, room? Yes, exactly. The yeah. proverbial elephant in the room. Uh, we're going to start off with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Big surprise, right? Okay. Yeah. So, listen. So, I'm just going to set the scene a little bit. You guys had just raised a billion dollars. I wrote about it. $12 billion dollar valuation. Everybody was kind of like, wow, wow, whiz, whoa, whoa. Is this Wix? Is this whiz? No, it's whiz. Okay, big cloud security play for you. You're going to do tons of M&A. Suddenly, out of the blue, news breaks that Google wants to buy you for $23 billion. They wanted to build a new cloud security business. They wanted you guys to be the, basically the anchor of that. It looked like it was a done deal. Everybody was kind of talking like it was all happening. And then, one minute later, boop, gone. Deal is off. And according to the memo that you sent out to your staff, sounded like you guys walked away from the deal. What really happened? Ooh. So, again, I can't talk specifics. As you, you can, can talk specifics. As, as, you, can, as you can imagine. But, <laughs> yes. uh, but I, I must say that, uh, It's not a unique position for startups to be, you know, uh, thinking about uh, acquisition, getting LOIs, like even, even at Wiz, in our, we, we got some, some discussion and some offers in, none of them were, was leaked and none of them was as big uh, as the opportunity that, that we talked about. And also in my first startup in Adalom, actually, it was both leaked and eventually we were, we were acquired by uh, Microsoft. But I think I, I found it is a, you know, as a CEO and founder, it's a, it's a fascinating position to be if you think about uh, this position. I, I actually, you know, in, in retrospective, it's, uh, it's fascinating. When it happened, I was super nervous. I, you know, it was one of the toughest decisions ever. And, and the reason it's a tough decision and the reason I'm looking at it as a fascinating uh, today is like that as a CEO, you wear so many hats. At the day that you're looking into uh, into such such an offer and and you know we're, when you're talking about a credible buyer and a premium definitely a premium valuation uh, so definitely you're thinking first of all like a as a founding team and the executive team so kind of these are some some interest on 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 there and then you're you, you need to also to act on the behalf of your investors also investors are very different you have like the early early vcs that care about some things versus more of like let's call it the growth or private equity there th they that care about other things so that's another group you need to think about your customers you know what's right for them you're thinking definitely about your employees and you're also negotiating as a future employee of the buyer mm -hmm. so all and and Actually, in that time, it, a lot of contradictions in, in, in a way. For, I'll, I'll give an example. For, for the investors, this is a financial outcome a, as a whole. Like this is, you know, it's kind of the end of the relationship with, with, with the startup in that case for the customers, employees. And, and, and for us, this is the, the beginning of a new journey. It's, it's a milestone in, in, in the company. So we might care about, a, a, about many other things. So... Again, the problem when, when you have it, and by the way, the leakage a bit helped on that, is that most of the, most of the stakeholders that I mentioned, you, you can't actually talk to them. I cannot reach out to employees and say, hey, we got an offer from a company. This is the valuation. What do you think? Do you like this company? Would you like work for you them? Mean before it gets leaked. Before it gets yeah. leaked. Actually, after it gets leaked and after you turn it down, <laughs> also you, can, you cannot truly talk about it. You, a, a, as you can imagine, this, the, these topics are, are very, very sensitive, both for ways, but bo also for, for, for the buyer. So I would tell you, I, I, I had so many sleepless nights. Uh, by the way, trying to think what's, what's best. For, for myself, but also for all the, all the amazing people that I'm working and our amazing customers. And I think we did the right choice. You think you made the right choice? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, how, you know, it's really interesting because I talked with a couple of your investors in that period between you, the news leaking, and then Wiz walking away. And I got a distinct, <laughs> you know, kind of like they were really excited for the 
next step. I mean, you know, these, this is going to be a big deal for them to get that win. That exit was going to be big. Interesting. They were telling other things, but <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So no, I, I, I was going to ask you that question. So what did you go to them for advice? Did they counsel you? Were they like, Asaf, we believe in you so much that we believe you will do the right thing. If you want to walk away, you can. Or were they like, this is a really good deal. You really, really should consider it. And then they were just like, what was the... I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, is in, in, in general, I think in, in mainly in, in healthy companies, in good companies, and, and, and I'm talking about this is 95% of the companies. It's not, not to be, you don't need to be a unicorn or other stuff, but you know, a healthy company with healthy relationship with investors, it's always the founder's decision. Good. In a way that you can, you know, board and investors cannot force me to work in a standalone company if I believe that the future should be with, uh, with Microsoft or Google or Amazon. Uh, if, if that's what the founding team wants, it's very hard to say, hey, no, you must continue on a standalone, and vice versa. Think about it that I don't want to work for, for, for a larger company and I want to still com c continue to run. You know, nobody going to buy me if I'm, sell I'm telling you. So, so truly, it, it, you know, it's not about, you know, I, I know that in the Silicon Valley, there are mu much more sensitivity about voting rights and stuff like that. I, I, you know, I think eventually, if you're building it right, it's always the, founding, uh, uh, the founder's decision, uh, in a way. And that was the case uh, uh, at Wizz uh, uh, as well, and, but, but also, uh, also in Adelon. I'll tell you that when you're turning down um, an offer, 23, 20, whatever, you're, th you're thinking about how you build like a hundred billion dollar company. Right. That's what you have in mind. That's kind of the goals that, uh, that you need. So truly it's a shift in, in the mindset that you have when you're yeah. thinking at that scale. Were, were you thinking a bit also about Adalam? So a bit of context, this is not his first rodeo. You formed a, you had a previous company, Adalam, which I wrote about. It got acquired by Microsoft for a lot less money, 320 million. L let's just see what ends with Wiz. Like, it was yeah, just exactly. <laughs> maybe exactly. it's more, so. Exactly, exactly. Okay. But you, you, you went there and you basically became the anchor to their cloud services, uh, cloud security services business. You um, built it, it's now like a $20 billion business apparently, something like that. So, you know, good job. <laughs> um, but did you look at that and think, oh my God, I missed, I missed the opportunity to do this as an independent company? Is that why you left to form Wiz? Um, it's interesting because I, I, I found like, you know, we, we typically we, we were perceived like in, in, the, in the Silicon Valley or in this industry is like, hey, second timers, you mentioned it, this is not my first rodeo. This. Yeah. I think that the time we served, in a way, at, at Microsoft was super, super valuable to actually to what we're doing today in two ways. In a way that is even more important that, that, than my Adolom journey as a standalone, as a startup. I think we, we, we tend to overlook the, the expertise outside of the, the startup community yeah. uh, and the ability, you know, in, in Microsoft, I truly, I think I, 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 I learned a ton, probably more than I learned in, in Adelum. I'll, I'll, I'll give you s s several examples that actually helped me uh, build, uh, build with. I, I think the number one is the scale. You talked about the scale of the business. It's also the scale of technology, building technology as a startup that you have very minimal resources and you're trying to get to the first milestone of first customers and you're trying to take some shortcuts and stuff like that versus building you know, an infrastructure to serve hundreds of millions of customers uh, and, 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 uh, and users uh, around the world. This is very, very different. So I think that's one thing that uh, uh, we took and implemented uh, from the beginning in, in, in Wiz. I think that the interesting, interesting for, me, for me, it was also fascinating to see that the amount of technology debt that we created in Adalom, in my first rodeo, in a way, uh, that, uh, um, that we, it was two and a half years, and we created the technology that of, 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 of 10 years. This is crazy. So to build it right from the beginning was something that uh, definitely we learned, we learned in Microsoft. I think another thing is the access to the customer and the customer obsession. Uh, you know, Microsoft, every door, every CIO, every CISO, if you want to talk, if you, if you truly want to understand big companies' problems, it's very easy and very, very easy access, even for engineer or to a product manager at Microsoft, the ability there. And I think, again, we, we overlook these, these opportunities and, and, uh, and that's kind of what we learned and saw the, you know, the Fortune 100 problems that helped us also uh, to build with. And the last thing is more culturally, I would say, uh, and that's actually what, what 
you know, I came, I came to Microsoft, I, I, I was thinking for two years, I stayed for five, I, I was negotiating, again, going back to negotiation, I was negotiating, you know, to the holdback to be minimal, uh, two years. You always knew you were going to leave and start another startup. Oh, definitely, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave after two years, but I stayed for five. And the reason is the, I, I think that, you know, meeting Satya, Satya meets every founder of a company that, uh, uh, that Microsoft acquires, no matter the size in a way. And, you know, first conversation with Satya is, you know, sharing with me about the learn it all uh, uh, company from, you know, know it all to learn it all. And basically saying, hey, Asaf, I'm here to set the rules. You're here to break the rules. And, mm -hmm. so, you know, looking at such, you know, one of the, one of the giants if, uh, and one of the best companies in the world and, and, the, and, uh, and, and Satya as a leader, that took me about the importance of leadership and culture in a company, no matter the size, how important is that in a change? All the same, when Google came along with an even bigger deal and presumably a very, very open opportunity to kind of build what you wanted, because they don't really have, I mean, they have a bit cloud security, but it's not really a massive business. You would have been bolted on as that, so you would have had all the freedom to keep building your culture and so on, but all the same, you said no, why? Um. Again, if I'm going, if I'm going to, to the independent way that, that now we're, 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 we're you know, heads down on, on, on that, the opportunity in the cloud security space, that's where we're playing, we believe it's bigger, definitely bigger than endpoint, bigger than network, so the opportunity to become a hundred plus billion dollar company is there. We believe that the company that's going to kind of own cloud security in the world going to be a hundred plus billion dollar company. I'm not sure it's going to be with, but if we'll do the, the right things and we'll, 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 we'll execute. And I think it's kind of in our hands. So basically when I needed to bet, I'm betting on my people and their execution abilities. Okay. So how were those people responding to you saying, by the way, we're not going to do the Google deal? Were they like, hurrah? Or were they like, what? I mean, what was the, what was the I, reaction? I, so uh, this is where I was wrong, in a way. I, I thought, you know, again, I, I didn't uh, had a chance to truly to talk, uh, speak with employees. And I, I was thinking that employees might be disappointed. Right. Because I'll, I'll start with, with, you know, hey, 23 billion is a premium on the value of Wiz. Right. Even today. So, so definitely they it's have, a bigger... They have, they have shares. It would have been a massive, yeah. massive lift for them. And, and I, I was thinking if, you know, if they're reading in, in the newspaper, maybe they're starting to look for new apartments and new exactly. cars and so, you know, starting to cash out in a way. And, 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 yes. and I was in a way shocked about how happy employees were about our independent, in the, in, in, in independent road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and their excitement about the journey and the excitement from, from customers. So definitely that encouraged me. Mm -hmm. But again, Google is a great company. They have an am amazing technology, amazing products, and, 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 and also amazing security business. Okay. I'm going to ask one last question about Wiz getting acquired because I, you, I wasn't going to ask this, but you've mentioned them. Has Amazon also tried to acquire you? You no. mentioned them. You said whether it's Microsoft, Google, or Amazon. So <laughs> I thought, you know, have, have they tried? Have they been no, knocking I, on I, your door I, I would say that secu cloud security is relevant for all cloud, sec uh, cloud providers. Okay. So, so definitely... You're uh, still getting all approached all then, aren't no, you? No, no. Uh, everybody okay. all, all care about, uh, about Wiz. We are perceived as enablers to the business. That's kind of what, what, what is important for, f by the way, for all the players. Because if Wiz will do a good job, and, and by the way, also Wiz competition and our market, more data will move, to, will move to the cloud, will be more agile, which is great for the business and also great for the cloud business okay. and the cloud providers. Okay, so you're not going to answer the Amazon question. <laughs> have, they t have you been getting other... I kind of think you've been priced out of M&A at this moment, though, with the, with the Google approach. I, I truly don't know anymore off. about... I, I'm not doing not any bets on okay, ways okay, anymore, okay, so okay, I'm like... Okay. I, I, yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, now... Going back to Wiz itself, so I have been very struck as a journalist um, by how many times investors, whether they're one of your investors, so you're backed by some really big names. You've got strategics like Salesforce, but you've also got Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, Thrive Capital, you know, really, really big names. Even when it's not them, it could be completely different uh, investors. You've got like, you know, index, et cetera, but let's say totally different. Everyone is remarking on, 
what a what a rocket ship you guys are. You're I think you're being called the one of the fastest growing SaaS startups in the history of SaaS startups. Right? So we're talking massive growth. And yet there are literally hundreds of other cloud security startups in the market, which we will talk about what you guys are doing with them in a second. But what is it that Wiz has done or figured out that these others have not? Like, why are you guys doing so much better than a bunch of others, including some that look a lot like you guys? I think just to be fair, on, on there, there are things that we've done right, and there are things that we are lucky to be in the right time and in the right market. And, 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 and again, I think the, the atmosphere to become a fast, the fastest SaaS, uh, SaaS company was, hey, cloud security problem is huge. Think about, we, we started with COVID. Uh, it felt like the, the worst timing to start a company, right. but if I need to pick a time in history to start, to start a cloud security company, probably it's March 2020, when, when Wiz was founded. <laughs> and and you, know, all, you know, people rushed to the cloud, digital transformation that plans that they had for two or three years were done in two months, and we created like a, a security debt. So all of that, Created and, and, and pushed for for an amazing market. Security and, and that's debt is that what you said? Security like? debt, yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. And and no. all of that, you know, not related to Wiz. So zero education, large market, big budgets. That's I would say timing and luck. I think on the on the execution piece, I I would say is is. The, going back to the customer obsession, going back to what we learned in Adelom and the, and the Microsoft acquisition, I think is, you know, it's the way we listen to the customers. The first thing we've done before writing, writing any line of code is talking to 100 uh, CISO, CISO's chief information security officer to better understand the problem. Truly, I thought cloud security is a problem that was already solved. Even in Microsoft, that's, that was my thinking. But talking to the customer and understanding the problem and understanding how to, the problem is how to build an effective cloud security program. You know, it's not only about, A, how many tools of de and detection I have, but truly about the, the business value in cloud and, the, and, and, and kind of the maturity of the buyer in that aspect. That was new. And I think that understanding that allowed, allowed Wiz, you know, to, to grow so, uh, so significantly. Um, do you, Let's talk about the growth, significant growth at Wiz. So you guys, um, the, 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 the notable thing is that you're in the balance of point solutions versus platform. You guys have very much taken a bet on platform. All in one is your kind of mantra. Um, do you see in, this is not the question I wanted to ask you. It's going to be about M&A. Okay. But. Do you see that pendulum swinging away from platform at any point soon? Because I feel a bit bad for point solutions. They're just all going to get snapped up eventually or made obsolete at the yeah, moment. Yeah, um, I, 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 I don't feel it's going, it's going back in a way. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the two forces that I'm seeing, I'm seeing yeah. in the market. I think number one force is, 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 is the market is looking for consolidation. You know, and, and in security, it's not about the vendor fatigue or procurement initiatives to have less and less vendors and stuff like that, it's truly more valuable to have everything in one platform. So if you understand that vulnerabilities and misconfiguration and data are all connected in one place and you know, we can reduce the noise, and again, going back to building an effective security programs in, 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 in your organization, you understand you must have a platform. So that's one force that we're seeing. And at the same time, which is really interesting, we're seeing the force from more of the VC and the startups. You know, if you go back to 2020, 2021, and even, even early 2022, you know, tons of money poured into, into cybersecurity uh, space, niche players. Also, us as founders, we had only one dream. Everybody going to be a unicorn, everybody going to IPO. I think we are sobering from that, and I think, you know, there is a lot of pressure from LPs to the VCs to show some returns. So the other force that we're seeing is, is pushing also startups to, uh, uh, to consolidation, and consolidation for startup means, means for, for exits. Again, we're seeing, you know, what like the the movement from unicorns to zombies. You know, yeah. startups that raised last time they raised was 2021, Al although it was a big a big round. But they're you know facing an, yeah. a tremendous down round, and and business is not growing as as expected. So these two forces, 
in our belief, we're going to see, you know, what we call the year of acquisitions and, and yeah. consolidation. Again, it's a market force, but also the, the startup and VCs are, yeah, are being pushed there. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised there. no one's really coined the term zombie corn. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it sounds odd, actually. Um, okay, so you guys wrote, I wrote about a one billion dollar fundraise that you guys did for M&A, pretty much to feed into yep. the trend that you've just been talking about. And now there's also some rumors that uh, you guys are in the process of closing even more money um, at an even higher valuation, which might have some secondary. I don't know if you care to comment on future fundraising. I, I would say again, we just raised a billion dollar for acquisitions. So I, 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 would, I would wait with any raising more funds okay. for, <laughs> for acquisitions. So okay, so. well, all the same, a billion dollars, a lot of money. That was back in, that was before the summer. There was, um, I think, in yeah. May or April or something. Yep. I haven't seen you make so many M&A moves, though, since then. You have made, I think, one tiny one. You've tried to, you've, Gem, even was maybe even before that fundraise. So, in fact, you haven't made any M&A um, since that deal was announced. Now, are you making quiet deals that are just not being reported? Or... What's really happening in the M&A market? Is there really not as many opportunities that you're really that interested in? Is the money being used for something else like cloud servers to manage your business or what? Uh, M&A is tough. Um, I think there are many opportunities and, and we'll see more M&As, by the way, not related to Wiz in, 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 in the security market and specifically in cloud security. So definitely we're gonna see more, more of that. Um, I would say we, we've done in the last 12 months, we've done two acquisitions, uh, Gem and Raft. So, yes. so, so again, um, I would say that we're pretty active in a way for the size of Weasel. We're four, four and a half years old startup. So, so, so definitely on, 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 on that side. I would say that the one thing to remember about consolidation and the market and also M&A, you know, one, one of the, you know, uh, that, that's the fault of us as, as vendors in the security space, but it also happens in, in other places. You know, we're thinking about consolidation and, and platformization is like, hey, we're buy a startup and shove it into customers and kind of more of M&A is, is like, Re repackaging or bundling in a way. That, that's not true consolidation. That's not what the market uh, is asking for. That's why M&As, at least at Wiz, when we're thinking much more strategically in a way of how do we you know, combine the product in the one technology stack that we've built. For us, when we're talking to startups uh, and opportunities to M&A, it's, it's less about you know, the, the technology that they've built. Like m many vendors would like, hey, this is the technology that you've built. I have a tremendous sales force. I'll take this great technology, push it into, uh, bundle it, and start selling it. We're actually looking at the opposite. It's not about the technology that, that you built. It's about the technology that you didn't build. Right. In a way, all the, all the things that if I'm taking you to the starting point with all the expertise that you have, with all the mistakes that you've, I, I, I love your mistakes because now we can rebuild it right. We can take all of that and rebuild it in a way, going back to the Adelum uh, lessons, the two and a half technology debt, let's kill this debt immediately. Let's build it as one technology stack. So it, it, it handles two things. One, building the right technology, but more important is actually for the customers themselves that are looking for real platform and not for bundling or, 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 or yeah, suites yeah. in a way that's not truly integrated. Yeah, that's been the failing of a lot of M&A plays. I mean, not to slam one of your investors, but that's always been how people describe Salesforce. You know, it's just a collection of acquisitions rather than proper integration, so yeah. Uh, M&A is, is it's truly failure. tough. So, yeah. so, so I, I would say again, Having the money doesn't mean that you need to be active. We won't do things just to show that we're active in the market that m might not make sense. We're risk averse and we understand that this is a culture, a, a, a culture fit that we're, we're looking. Think about it, we're a 1,500 people organization. So almost every acquisition is a tremendous culture that's coming and, 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 and might, might, might affect. And actually we are looking for to, to improve our, our culture as well. But it's every acquisition is a massive acquisition uh, for us. And also we are, as I mentioned, we are four and a half years old. We're a toddler in many yeah. things. We're still building our character in a way. Yeah. So, so we take it very, very carefully, but I do believe that uh, more things to come. Okay, so are you talking with startups now? Are there, com are there targets at the moment that you're working on? I, I would say that the amount of corp dev that I'm, involved like is, is, is striking. You know, I'm, I'm looking at my weeks over the last couple of months versus a year ago. 
Yeah. It's a it's a night and day on the corp dev investment that I am putting into. Are you taking a very active role in it then? Oh yeah, it's it's ah, yeah. Th that's that's one of the most important. You know, you know, you, you always have the organic growth yeah. that you continue. You must have the engine that that, yeah. that growing and, and tons of uh, of innovation that is coming out of Wiz, the Wiz code and Wiz defend, and we're doing yeah. amazing amazing stuff but also the opportunities of uh, okay. inorganic growth. So what are the gaps that you see right now that are harder to build and easier to bolt or bring in from outside? Is it about customers that you want to um, be able to access or is it about technology? And if it's tech, what is it that you guys, that you think you need? It's neither, it's oh. all about people. Okay, so it's, it's the people. It's all, it, it, and it's not yeah. equi hire. It's all about the people. It's about the people interaction with technology and what they've learned. Again, and, and they might did, did tons of mistakes, but these mistakes are good for us. It's the people interaction with the market and the customers that they access and their key learnings about what's, what's a real problem, what's important to solve, how, how the market thinks about it. But it's the people eventually. So, so that's my focus always. So there is like no product gap that you think you guys have. Right? Uh, there are so many gaps <laughs> in, in, in our world. That, 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 that would, yeah. that actually, that, that would enable us like, to, to truly believe that the, oppor the, the market opportunity is so huge yeah. for, for Wiz. So again, there are many things that we like, we, we, we super important, like priority zero in a way that we want to do and we're not handling right now. And some of it will handle it organically, some, some through acquisitions. Okay, so there are a lot of things I have not gotten to that I've wanted to talk to, but I'm very glad to hear you guys are a risk averse uh, you take a risk-averse approach because you're a security company. That's <laughs> what you need to be. Um, I want to just shift a little bit, if possible, to because of where you are and what you see, and security breaches are the thing that is, you know, the story of the moment over and over and over again. Um, you guys, of course, use a lot of AI um, in your approach to um, being able to detect what's happening and follow patterns and so on. If I, I can, I, I'd like you to answer this question in any way you want to, um, but what are you seeing as the big threats right now? So this can be, what are the biggest security threats to corporates? Or what do you just see as the biggest threats in the market right now? Or how is a particular technology impacting us? Yeah. What, please answer it right now. Uh, I, 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 I totally agree with you. You know, you know, it's it's you know, yeah, probably you saw the, mo the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once. Th yes. That's that's kind of, kind of how security feels in 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 the last couple of months. Uh, you know, from critical infrastructure. I think just because we we're a week before the election, yes. I think that that's kind of the 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 state actors, the 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 nation state cyber actors that are, you know, uh, looking into cyber influence operations. We are seeing a lot of that. We see Russia and Iran and, the, and China very, very active, uh, specifically in, in, in the US. It's interesting to see that each one has different targets in a way, like the Russians are more looking into one candidate versus the Iranians that are looking into uh, 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 other candidates. So, so very interesting to see the older geopolitical add to that. Like, again, I'm Israeli, so very, very conscious about the, the Israeli, Hamas, Lebanon, Iran mm -hmm. conflict, the Russia, Ukraine conflicts, the potential China, Taiwan, con so, so many things in the geopolitical things that we're seeing. I, I, I think one, one, of the, one of the interesting things that actually related to a, a, a small startup named Wiz is that the implications of what we're seeing in the federal gov and, 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 and election related in a way in the, in the influence, what we're seeing is like deep fake, for example. Two weeks ago, dozens of my employees got a voice message from me uh, Wait, who that got it? Who's dozens of w w with employees oh. that were they were the, really? the attacker tried to get their credential. It's super interesting because it was a, a, v a voice message from me that basically what, what, what the attacker did because we were able to track it down where they got my voice in a way. Actually, it was from a conference very similar to that. I'm sorry. I hope we no, no one creates a deep fake of you from this. I'll, I'll, tell, you, yeah. I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you the good thing. I'm, I'm so nervous. I, I kind of have a public speaking anxiety. So my voice is squeaky. So when my, vo this is not my real voice typically. So, so when they're <laughs> using that attackers, so, <laughs> so it doesn't sound like me on the real day to day job. So, so that, that's how they, they were able to say, ah, that doesn't sound like a stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, deep fake that we saw, um, you know, in other spaces also impacting so even small startup like Wiz. Who made the deep fake of your then? Did you, uh -huh. did you trace 
<laughs> no, we well, traced where the voice came. We, we ah, that's we traced what's where the voice came from. But did you trace who in, who tried to infiltrate? That's the that's why cyber attacks are. Th it's so beneficial. The the risk you know of getting caught is 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 very low. So uh, to, to find exactly, you, you might find which group it's related and stuff like that. Uh, but no, I, I actually, we don't know at all. So Are you trying to figure it out? Do you have the capability to try to do that sort of forensic analysis? So, so we have a lot of measurements to, yes. uh, again, related to WIS, but also unrelated to WIS, as you can imagine. We talked about risk averse and being yeah. a security company. You know, we're using lots of security products to, and, and partners that we have uh, uh, to protect exactly uh, uh, against things like that as well. Um, but yeah, but it's, it's, it was fascinating as well. That's amazing. So not even a cybersecurity company is safe from cyber attack. Oh no! No, nobody is safe. Yeah. Like, and 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 also, this is not the whiz promise. Like, it's 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 a hard work. It's about the people that you have in the organization. It's about the processes and then technology that supports them. And that's we're supporting like the number three technology. But it's truly about the processes and the people that organizations have. Wonderful. Um, we are out of time. It's very lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. everybody for coming and listening. Thank you.